So I have this neighbor to my Northwest who is a pretty fair cook. And I thought I would whip up some of her recipes for this video and give you a cost breakdown. These are going to be family friendly, delicious recipes on a budget. And they are all coming from Reed Drummond, who you might better know as the Pioneer Woman. My family and I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is not that far from Pawhuska, where Pioneer Woman has her store and restaurant. And my mom has purchased me several of the Pioneer Woman cookbooks over the years for Christmas. So I flipped through here and looked for some of what I consider to be the most budget-friendly recipes in these cookbooks. And I'm gonna share some of them with you today and give you a cost breakdown with each one. Last week, I met a friend of mine for lunch at a local restaurant and they had a corn chowder as a daily special that has been living rent-free in my head ever since I ate it. It was so delicious. Tonight, I'm going to be making a corn chowder recipe from this Pioneer Woman cookbook, Food From My Frontier. It was published in 2012. In my big Dutch oven here on the stove, I have three slices of thick cut bacon that I cut into little pieces. It's been cooking for a few minutes now, probably about three minutes, and so it's starting to render some of the fat. So I'm going to add half of a yellow onion chopped I'm gonna let that cook for probably three, four, maybe five minutes until the onions are translucent and the bacon is cooked. This is five ears of fresh corn that I shucked and then cut off of the cob. So it's not cooked yet, but so five years of fresh corn cut off the cob. One can of diced green chilies. These are actually the fire roasted kind, but I think that'll work just fine in this recipe. And then these are chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. Sometimes I have to go to a couple of stores to find those. I find them in Walmart, but it's like half of the Walmarts carry them and half of them don't. I took three of them out and chopped them up. So these are about three of those chipotle peppers minced going in the pot. About a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more of this better than bouillon. Four cups of water. And here's the part that surprised me. She said to add the heavy cream now. Usually I add that at the end. It calls for a cup and a half in the recipe. This is a pint, which is two cups. So I'm gonna add most of that container, but not all of it. I'm gonna give this a stir and bring it up to a simmer. She says to simmer it for around 25 minutes or so. So I'll just keep an eye on it. She doesn't say to cover it, so I can give it a stir and make sure that it doesn't burn. So we'll get that up to a simmer and then we'll come back and finish it up. There's one more thing that we're gonna add to this. We are going to finish up this soup by adding a thickener. And I thought this was really interesting. Instead of using a cornstarch slurry made from water and cornstarch, she recommends using corn meal. Meal. So what I have in here is three tablespoons of cornmeal with about the same amount of water. And I'm gonna stir this into the soup and bring it back up to a simmer and let it simmer for about 10 minutes and then it will be ready to serve. All in all today, in May of 2024, the ingredients for this big pot of soup cost me $8.83. And it is going to make, I think, eight servings or six very, very large servings. I mean, I think this is gonna make a lot of soup, so I can't really complain about that. I thought about serving this with some cornbread, but that seemed like corn overkill, so I think I'm just gonna make some really easy cheese quesadillas with flour tortillas and shredded cheese and call it a day with this one. I'm really looking forward to it. I am really excited to try this next recipe. It's a fun one, and especially if you have kids, this would be a fun one to do with them. It is from The Pioneer Woman Cooks, The New Frontier. This cookbook was published in 2019, and it is for an 11 carton cake. And the star of the show is a six ounce carton of yogurt, which you put in the cake, and then you use the container to measure a lot of the other ingredients. And I made sure that I picked up the Great Value brand because it's just a square carton. I thought it would be easier to use as a measuring cup than some of the name brands that have a more tapered top. You start by dumping the yogurt into a bowl and just using a spatula to scrape as much yogurt as possible out of that carton because then the carton becomes your measuring cup. And after that, you add one six ounce carton worth of vegetable oil, one carton of granulated sugar, and then two eggs, which you obviously don't need the carton for, and then just give that a good mix. After that come the dry ingredients, two cartons worth of flour, one carton of cocoa powder, plus half a teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. I'm gonna use my mixer to mix that all together, and then the last few ingredients I'm adding are a teaspoon of vanilla, and then one carton's worth of milk, and one carton's worth of mini chocolate chips. 
The unknown for me with this recipe is the cake pan because I saw that Re uses a 10 inch round cake pan and I only have like a standard eight or nine inch cake pan. I think it's a nine inch cake pan. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. It probably means that I'm gonna have to bake it longer. So I'm gonna pop it into the oven at 350. The instructions say 35 to 38 minutes. So I'll check on it at about 30 to 35 minutes, but I'm guessing it's gonna take closer to 40 or maybe a few minutes longer since I'm using a slightly smaller cake pan. My cake is completely cooled, so it's time to frost it. And there are instructions in Pioneer Woman's recipe for making the frosting using butter and then using a couple containers of the powdered sugar. So you'd still use the same yogurt container rinsed out to measure out the powdered sugar for the frosting. But honestly, given the price of butter these days, it's actually just as cheap for me just to purchase a container of frosting. And I'm actually gonna take that shortcut today. So we're gonna frost this cake up and give it a try. Everybody is like, hovering over it ready to try this cake and see if it tastes as good as it smells and looks. This is not only a fun cake to make and a delicious cake to eat, it's a really cost efficient cake too. When I added up how much the ingredients I used today cost me, it came out to $4.36 for the cake. And then I think you could probably just dust it with a little powdered sugar and call it a day. Or if you wanted to spend another couple of dollars, you could either make the frosting from scratch, like I mentioned, or you could just do what I do, take the shortcut and frost the cake. And you're ending up with a really delicious, easy cake for under seven bucks. I mean, that's fantastic. We are gonna unbox my Good Shop box because I'm gonna need some things inside here for our next few recipes, and they are sponsoring today's video. Good Shop offers fully customizable boxes of high quality meat and seafood delivered right to your door on your schedule. They have over 70 items to choose from, including grass-fed beef, organic and free-range chicken, pork tenderloin, thick cut bacon, wild Alaskan salmon, shrimp, trout, all kinds of things. So there's something for everybody. We are gonna be throwing some things on the grill tomorrow night. So in a minute, you're gonna see me making a tequila lime marinade for these chicken breasts. But where steaks are concerned, if you have a good quality steak, like the ones that come in my Good Shop box, the only thing it needs is salt. My husband will season these with salt and wrap them in cellophane and let them rest for 30 minutes to an hour before he throws them on the grill. He uses his digital thermometer to cook them to perfection. And I'm telling you, these steaks are restaurant quality. They are so fantastic. Good Shop sources their products from right here in the US. There are no antibiotics or added hormones ever. Plus, you can basically try it risk-free because they have a 100% money back guarantee. If you do not love your Good Shop box, then they will give you your money back. Grilling season is here, so there's never been a better time to try Good Shop and you can get $120 off across your first four boxes when you go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and you use my code cmindymom120 or you can just click the link in the description box Box below. Again, that's $120 off across your first four Good Shop boxes when you use my code cmindymom120 at goodshop.com slash YouTube, or you follow the link in the description box below. And thank you again to Good Shop for sponsoring today's video. My husband and I have discovered that when we are grilling chicken, it really helps to get the chicken breast marinating either very early in the morning, the night that we're gonna cook it, or even the night before. So I'm going to make up the tequila lime chicken marinade from the Pioneer Woman Cooks Food from My Frontier. This is the last of three limes that I am juicing into my little blender pitcher here. Actually, it's my big blender pitcher. To that, I am adding five tablespoons of olive oil, five garlic cloves, one, two, three, four, five. One jalapeno, which I sliced open so I could take the seeds out. Salt to taste. I'm gonna be pretty generous with it, probably about a teaspoon and a half because this is a marinade. A cup of cilantro. I just guessed, I just took a handful. And three quarters of a cup of tequila. And when I went to the liquor store to purchase this, the person told me that this size, 200 milliliters, is exactly three quarters of a cup. So that is exactly what I need. I'm gonna pop this into the blender and blend it up till it's smooth and then pour it over my chicken breasts. I have six of them in my little marinating container. Pop the lid on and get those marinating overnight. Now, most of the ingredients for that marinade are super cheap. I mean, limes are 25 cents each in my store. I think the cilantro was a little over 50 cents for a bunch. The jalapeno that I purchased was seven cents. 
<laughs> the most expensive part of that particular marinade is the tequila. Now, when it comes to using alcohol in my cooking, I'm usually not using the good stuff, right? I'm gonna save the good wine for drinking. I'm not gonna use my craft beers to make beer bread. And actually, I'm not really a tequila fan, even as a, a cocktail, like I'm not a huge drinker of tequila. So I picked up just a very small container, like I said, when I was making the marinade, perfectly three quarters of a cup, which is what I needed, and it cost me $4.50. It is the next day, and we're gonna get the chicken on the grill here in just a bit. And to go along with that, I thought I would make some cheese grits. The recipe I am using is gonna come from this Pioneer Woman Cooks cookbook. I believe this is the very first one. The Pioneer Woman Cooks, recipes from an accidental country girl. It was published in 2009. If you are not familiar with grits, they're made from corn, so it can change up sort of your typical side dishes, like if you're getting tired of mashed potatoes or getting tired of pasta, maybe try some cheese grits. It's really kind of a rich side dish, so it'll be really good to go along with the chicken breast because it's pretty lean. Let me turn you around, I'll show you what we're using to make this, and then we'll get going. This recipe doesn't have a ton of ingredients, which is usually a good thing in my book. I have two cups of grits right here, and Ree says you can use quick cooking or the regular grits. These are the quick cooking kind. It calls for four garlic cloves, and I'm out of fresh garlic, so I'm just gonna use a couple teaspoons of this already minced garlic, four eggs, 12 tablespoons of butter divided. You'll see how I'm using that here in a little bit. Three cups of cheddar cheese, and this is actually only two cups, but I have another block in the fridge, so I'll grate up another half an eight ounce block of cheese, and a little dash, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. In this pot, I have nine cups of water coming to a boil. I also threw in about a teaspoon of salt. Once it boils, I will add the grits and I will cook them until they're done. It should take less than five minutes and then I'm just gonna turn the heat off while we prepare the other ingredients. I have my four eggs in this bowl and I have whisked them. And before I add them to my grits, I wanna temper the eggs. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of the hot cooked grits and stir it together with the eggs. If you add the eggs too quickly to the grits without tempering them first, then you're gonna end up with chunky scrambled eggs in your grits. And I don't think that is what Re intended. And let's do a couple more times. Okay, now we're ready to stir these in with the rest of the grits. Now you wanna add your butter and stir that in until it's completely melted. I was wrong, you do not need to save some for later. It doesn't need to be separated. It just needs to be in chunks because it will be easier to incorporate it into the grits. It'll melt quicker. Now three cups of grated cheese, a few teaspoons of this minced garlic, and a little shake of cayenne. Probably just gonna do a pinch there. Just give it a little bit of heat. Once this is all incorporated, I'm going to pour it into a greased nine by 13 casserole dish and I'm gonna pop it into a 350 degree oven. And it's going to need to bake for about 25 to 30 minutes. It says 30 to 35, but I'm gonna check on it after about 25 minutes. One of the great things about grits is that they are super cheap. I can get a canister of grits for a little over $2 at my Walmart and it will make a ton of grits. In fact, the total cost for this recipe for me today was right at around six bucks and the dairy actually was probably the biggest cost. This next recipe is not in one of the Pioneer Woman cookbooks that I own. Maybe it's in one of the other cookbooks that she's put out. It is available online, that's where I found it, so I will leave it linked in the description box below. But I seem to remember watching her make this on her show years and years ago. It is a skillet meal with ground beef and noodles. In fact, it's sort of like a hamburger helper. And I seem to remember her telling a story about coming up with this recipe in response to her daughter asking for a meal like this. I'm just getting started here. And on this side of the pan, I have half an onion chopped and sauteing and two tablespoons of butter. And on the other half of the pan, I'm starting to brown up a pound of ground beef. And now that the onions are starting to soften, I'll just incorporate that all together and keep cooking it until the meat is completely browned. The meat is done brown and the onions are getting translucent. I'm gonna add a few teaspoons of this minced garlic and about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Give that a stir. Let it cook for just about 30 seconds or so until the garlic gets fragrant. Now I'm adding one teaspoon of paprika, about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Maybe, there we go. 
teaspoon or so of Worcestershire, probably more than a teaspoon. I like Worcestershire, so probably two for me. Stir that all around a little bit. The original recipe calls for just 12 ounces of egg noodles, but I have a 16 ounce package. So I am going to add all of this package, one pound, 16 ounces, and I'm going to increase the beef broth from two and a half cups to three cups. And I actually just use my coffee maker a lot of times to make beef broth from bouillon. So, so to this, I'm gonna add three cups of beef broth and one cup of hot water. Now I wanna bring this up to a simmer and then I'm gonna cover it and let it simmer until the noodles are cooked. And I'm just gonna keep checking on it to make sure that it doesn't need any more water and kind of giving it a stir from time to time to be sure that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. But once it comes up to a simmer, it should take about eight to 10 minutes or so to cook everything to al dente. Okay, this is definitely done, I believe. The noodles are cooked nicely, maybe even just a few, like a minute or so overcooked. I probably should have stopped it just a minute or so sooner, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream and about a third of a cup of sour cream. And I'll stir that all around and just let it sit on the, the stove is turned off, but just let it sit in the hot pot for another couple of minutes or so. And then it will be ready to serve. This came together really, really fast. I mean, egg noodles cook pretty quickly compared to just standard traditional pasta. And I think I'll just probably heat up some green beans. Maybe I'll make some muffins or biscuits or something like that to go along with this really easy, quick meal. This is another super affordable recipe. When I added up the cost of these ingredients, if I'm purchasing them in Walmart today, it came out to just about $9.25. And this is a skillet meal that will easily feed my family of five with leftovers. In fact, I think there would be six very generous servings in this skillet. So a skillet meal for less than 10 bucks, I think that's a pretty good deal. For more budget-friendly meal ideas for your family, check out this video or YouTube thinks you might want to watch this one. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my new videos coming out and I'll see you in the next one.